Hey guys, what's up? It's Rygar the Destroyer, and today we're going to be taking a look at 8D8 from the Power of the Force line. Now, as always, if you like this video and want to see more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It's free. It really helps out the channel. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at this guy's packaging. Here it is, as you can see, it's pretty standard for what we saw out of the Power of the Force line. Big image of Darth Vader up here in the corner. This particular one is from the, I guess, the freeze frame uh, lineup, so it's got a little hole here in the card. When you flip it around onto the back, you can see an image of uh, the character from the movie, and he's currently torturing a little gonk droid here, pretty funny. It also shows the figure with its accessory, and then some of the other figures that you could pick up around the same time. So overall, pretty standard stuff, so let's go ahead and get back to the figure itself here. Now 8D8 stands at about three and three quarter inches tall. So he's right in scale with all of your other Star Wars three and three quarter inch uh, figures. And he does come with a couple accessories. The first one is his little freeze frame slide. And I'm not really sure how well I'm gonna be able to show this off in person. Um, basically, what you do is you hold this up in front of the light and you can see this um, sort of still image of the character from the movie. Um, it's the same image that's shown up here. Um, like I said, it's just kind of hard to show off um, on camera. One thing that I think is really funny is how hard Kenner leaned into the torture droid aspect of this character. It says down here, Jabba's droid in charge of torture. You know, basically, it's just kind of funny that they're, they're selling toys, you know, specifically centered around uh, torturing. It's sort of funny. His next uh, accessory does also lean into that, and that is his actual torture rack setup. Over here on the side, there's a little lever that you can have the figure pull. And it does actually have the, like, I guess, hot irons that you can press down onto your gonk droid figure. Uh, again, really funny that they would lean so hard into the torture aspect of a, uh, you know, character uh, that you're selling a toy uh, about. Uh, just sort of uh, a funny thing. Overall, uh, this accessory is, is all right. It is a little cheap. I wish they had filled in some of this stuff. But, you know, honestly, at the original price point, uh, I feel like you're getting quite a bit for your money. As far as the figure itself go, uh, goes, it does have um, one little feature here. It's kind of hard to show off again. It's like that light piping stuff. So as you can see here, his eyes sort of glow. And that is just piped in from the top of the figure. So it's, it's hard to show off on camera, but definitely in person you can see them um, sort of glow if you've got the light set up correctly. Uh, he does have some fairly basic articulation that we'll run through here. He's got a swivel in the head, swivels at both shoulders, and then swivels at his hips. So Overall, uh, what do I think of this guy? You know, honestly, the, the figure isn't, you know, the greatest in the world. Um, it definitely has fairly limited articulation and, and you know, and stuff. But um, overall, I think that it's one of the better ones from the Power of the Force lineup. You know, I think at, at this point, really none of the main character figures from the Power of the Force are really worth going after. It's just these kind of crazy background characters uh, that I think that you should be looking for. So if you're trying to set up a Jabba's Palace display, I think this is one of those figures that you should go ahead and pick up, especially since you can probably find him for well under $10. So anyway, go ahead and leave your comments and questions down in the comments section below, and I guess I'll see you later.